All right, guys, I take you along uh, on a little project again. The plan is basically to build a, a Santa Maria grill with a, let me put this on the way. Um, a Santa Maria grill that where I can, of course, like, you know, with the stands on the side, the wheel, you can move up and down your your grilling roast but not just that I did a little test on uh, my regular Weber grill and uh, I'm gonna incorporate this here this is like a rotisserie gear set like basically churrasco stuff you know I have already a motor I'm gonna make this so I can drop this in and take this out at any time and uh, basically it's gonna you know basically sit above here so kind of like that and if she scrubs go over here the motor is gonna sit in the back there and it's gonna keep spinning whatever you know what i mean but it's gonna be a unit that I can take out, put in the bottom whenever I wanna use that and of course have like two separate uh, grill roasts here. You know, so I can take this one out and maybe do steaks here at the same time while I do rotisserie here or use a wok. I'm planning even to maybe do later on a hood so I can smoke a little bit. Maybe a hood that is a little higher here is to smoke uh, cold smoke fish. I also plan to do my own fire bricks to insulate the thing and to keep the hold, keep the heat a little bit better. So basically that's the plan and uh, I already started up cutting some material uh, went to the uh, to the supplier today, bought some stainless steel, it's about I played close to $600 for that steel. This is 2 inch angle. So basically, the bricks are gonna standing in here. I'm gonna make them one and a half, close to 2 inch thick. And then they stand basically upright in here. The bottom box. Here I gotta make a channel to make the motor go up and down so I can actually lower the shish kebabs or the roast pretty much very close to the coal if I want to and uh, in general I think the box I'm gonna make it basically one foot high something like that and uh, I guess I just make short videos while I make progress because um, filming the whole time is way too boring so even that introduction here three minutes already but um, that's what's gonna be. Okay, I got this uh, bottom bottom frame done. Not the best welding. Little gray here, probably too hot. I don't know, you know, I'm just a hobby welder guy. But um, I'm gonna fly over this with a wheel anyway, so it really doesn't matter. It's a grill. I don't know how much I'm gonna do today, but keep going maybe with the top part of the frame. Not sure yet. Okay, I made a little progress. Uh, maybe I should go over here first. So. Okay, this is uh, this is the the bottom. Okay, let's uh, show that first. I bought this uh, stainless steel card for 50 bucks on Craigslist. Lots of usable items on it. I already got the casters and I needed some stainless steel sheet metal which you guys probably know is expensive and hard to come by in like smaller quantities. And for fifty dollars, there's a lot of good stuff on this card that I can, uh, or I will actually use. 
I might try to put also, if I have enough leftovers, a shelf in the bottom. So when I take one grill rack out, I can put it stored there. Also those handles here. What was on there? I bought those stainless steel spring handles for doing later this ratchet mechanism. You can buy it from this company here. Uh, you know, Island Auto LSD.com, whatever. On Amazon, like pretty much everything. And uh, this goes then, I cut them out here. Those basically are the holders for those, for the poles, for the legs. And I thought, well, this is already designed to take them. So I'm going to weld them on here in the corners. Kind of. Like that. And uh, then I can stick my poles in. The good part about this, I can take those poles out because they're screwed in. In case I want to move this grill. Uh, maybe take it with me on a trip somewhere. I don't think so. Probably too heavy. If the after the the stones and everything is in there, but you know, at least I got this option. Then uh, on the other side, yeah, I want to show that. Let me flip this around. Sorry for the camera stuff. I gotta do this in one hand. So what I came up with for the for the uh, refractor. For the fire, fire bricks to hold them in is basically, so far I have only the side pieces, but this is going to go on here. As you can see, I cut 15 millimeters off on the top, bended it over. So now it's like a U-channel. And then I can just slide that brick in there from the bottom, slide it in there, and then the one that goes on the bottom is going to slide against it and holds it in place. That's the plan at least. But the, the, this part here is probably not going to be so easy because in the front is easy. I just make one long one, 30 inches. But here I got to do a slot out little bit and maybe I do a um, something that I can slide in in case I want to later on like also do smoking with this thing but in general the slot out needs to go in there because here the motor from the gear mechanism uh, if I go all the way down it's it's gotta have a way to go down it's probably gonna sit right in that wall so or outside anyway there gotta be a slot and uh, maybe also helps a little bit with air circulation anyway, so I'm not really worried about that. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to make stones in the front door. So far I plant stones only bottom, left, the back, and the left and the right. I don't know about the door. I don't think really is, is necessary. I mean, lots of people do this without any, you know, fire bricks at all. So, yeah. I'm gonna make another short video when uh, there's more progress. Okay, I'm gonna pick up for the day, but hey, I got a little plasma cut out today. Looks okay. Uh, of course, it's not like a professional machine, but for me in the garage, is okay. Um, kind of the bandsaw. It's fine, but stainless steel really, really eats up blades. <clears throat> and I've tried to save that a little bit also to cut the big sheets. I did this with the angle grinder, but tomorrow the other ones I'm going to try out with this. I did actually try it out earlier. Should be cold by now. Huh? 
nicht Fokus. Komm mal. Here you go. It's not bad. But you know you have to grind and if you wanna um, tick well this afterwards for for me probably pretty good. But for tick welding you need to grind quite a bit to make this fit up okay. At least decent, you know, I mean. So anyway, here we are. I made some progress. Now it starts to look like a grill. Uh, at least a little bit if you know. If you know it's gonna be a grill. <laughs> it doesn't shake. I wonder I was able to make it keep it from warping. I had a couple of issues with warping when I turned over this edge and then start welding. So I start welding this side, this side. Then in the middle, wait a little bit. And then, you know, do in sections to avoid this to to bend and warp too much. And probably, this is the bottom. And I talked about the uh, The rollers, hold on, we got, got a couple of them here. And they're gonna go in here. And then there's like stabilizer bars. They will also, you know, provide me as a shelf. I think I'm gonna just make a nice wood shelf. Hey, how's it going? A nice wood shelf into the bottom. And, uh, oh yeah, I need new gas. Gas is empty. Continue tomorrow. For those people who are interested in this kind of plasma cutter, it's very cheap. Uh, so you have a close-up from how clean this machine actually cuts. Hard to focus here. Here you go. You see there's barely... There's barely anything. You know, you gotta work with like sanding a little bit. I mean, I really see this on thin material. The machine is absolutely perfect. Thicker material, well, you know, when it comes to thickness, like this angle iron here. Hold on, man. This one here. This is about the maximum where you can get like fairly clean cuts without 
but you still gotta grind. You know, I think the it's okay if you wanna save on uh, consumables and stuff, definitely. But for really thick stuff, I mean in general, you know, thick stuff you always have a little bit of extra work. But I don't wanna ruin my bandsaw blades too much on this. That's the machine. Hynaid. Surprisingly, like uh, the 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 cool thing is uh, it got pilot arc, so no touching needed. You know, I really like that. And uh, very small, very light. I was also looking for something that still fits on my card. I mean, I barely need this. So for the few times a year when I do something. It fits right here, and I still have, you know, some space for my rods and stuff. I kind of like it. This uh, is going to be a great grill when it's done. Of course, it takes time. Okay, I made some more progress. Uh, got my, my handle on here. I'm basically this way. I'm gonna go up and then you just lift the handle and this way is gonna go down and if you put it like this it's gonna lock. Simple but effective. Looks pretty cool so far, I kinda like it. My little grill. Uh, now I just gotta make a. God, this is probably still hot. The sleeve here I made, this, uh, yeah, yeah, now look at my glass, they're not all perfect, but that basically goes then, here up and down, ooh, hot, hot, and uh, gonna make a little support for the crates, that moves then up and down and in the front here I'm gonna use I'm not sure what I'm gonna use I think this is too big for the for the grease drip pan you know yesterday I was thinking maybe use those channels here they come from that card you know I could weld them together and then put them in there. Maybe I do that. Gotta get at least some use out of it. <clears throat> Something like that. Well, yeah, that's it. Uh, probably didn't need to do that back channel as far down as I actually did. Maybe I close this up three more inches up I don't know yet I don't think that's super important the coals are not gonna be stacked in here like crazy I mean yeah they're gonna come the the uh, stones in the bottom another inch and a half but maybe I close it up to here and then uh, that's so easy I can just use, use a plate, put it in here. I need a little room here for the motor to go down to here somewhere, but not that much. That was just unnecessary a little bit. Oh well, yeah, that's pretty much it. I get some stainless hardware coming in. Also, I'm. I get a, I was first thinking put another one of those in here, hold on, those, but I think it's too big for that wheel, so I ordered a little knob from a boat steering wheel in stainless, gonna weld that on there, well and then uh, 
I think I'm gonna do this door on the very end. I got those uh, hinges here. But there's so much. There's just a lot of stuff. Yeah. Here they are. Stainless case, you wear them on. I think I'm just gonna tack them on the sides. Not too crazy, so in case I wanna, for some reason, I wanna take this off. I don't see myself taking this door off, but who knows. So, you know, technically I could just weld them in the holes, but then it's gonna be difficult. I just think I just tack them here on the side a little bit. <coughs> and, yeah, build the crates. And then maybe one more day for the stones, for the bricks, fire bricks. I decided to make them myself because they're pretty much $200 if you buy them to line out that grill. Or 150 which, uh, God, I just need to buy some perlite, some cement, the water glass I already have down there. And uh, make a mixture, a little form. Then I can also make one custom made for here, custom made here, custom made here. And basically, you know, line this out pretty easily. That's the plan. All right, uh, I made a little more progress. Just pretty much on the final stretch, I almost would say. My wheel is on and the ratchet mechanism. And the support for the curl balls. I also made this a removable grease oil by the drip pan. Simply hangs on here, and uh, and uh, pretty much cool. I like it. Um, what's left to do? Of course, on the end, I'm gonna, you know, brush this, the welds a little up and, uh, and so on. But now I'm gonna do the, the rows and the side tables. I'm gonna make them stationary. I don't need to fold. <coughs> Probably never move that thing around much anyway. And uh, basically where the, the those uh, legs just plug in the bottom and screw them in and I have a few, I decide later on, I have a, a few crossbars that came with this, uh, with this card and if the legs wobble too much around, then the holes are basically here. Then I just put them in and weld it, tack weld them to avoid wobble from the legs. We'll see. I decide that later. But basically, then just doing the stones, make the front door, and that's it. Keep you updated. Oh yeah, I want to mention. Uh, you can see there's a little, a decent slope. I don't know if you can see this from there, but basically, you see, it runs forward into the pan, that's on purpose. I go with actually a really good tilt, want to make sure this, uh, this runs into the pan and not to the back. Yeah, okay, I made some more progress. As you can see, let me go back a little bit. Well, almost done. I still gotta do the tables on the side, but this uh, 
This is done. The host is done. My door. I found some old springs here. Basically. Like that. Mechanism works like that. It's just a hook and a latch there. Good enough. <clears throat> yeah. Very happy with it. So now, okay, I can of course move this out. And then, uh, another one of those in and go like that and of course gotta do the oops almost banged it on the ground we put this flipping pan in So I'm um, just holding the camera. That's basically how it goes. Can still grind a little bit here and there, but basically I'm almost done. Oh gosh, it was a lot of work. Yeah, I'm done. Those are the fire bricks. Hopefully that works. Portland cement, perlite, water glass, play sand, and uh, ah, turned out good. I like it. Beautiful weather. <laughs> Not like in Germany, probably grey right now. Mm -hmm. Raining.